This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. People getting into the ballpark. Well, we're ready to go now with Chuck Dobson, who has won five and lost five, won four in a row before losing his last start against Baltimore four days ago. Nick McCullough stands in at home plate. Merle Anthony, the plate umpire, puts his mask on. And here to broadcast for you is Harry Carey. Thank you, Monty. Hello again, everybody. A beautiful day for baseball, and we're all set to go. Here's Dick McCarlough, nothing out of four yesterday, hitting 276 for the year. Four homers, 12 runs out of this. Possessor, one of the most unique batting stances in the game. He really raises that right foot, that front foot, before he swings. Swings, and he misses. One strike and a ball. Chuck Dobson on the hill. He has won five, lost five, earned run average 3.50. Left-hand hitter digging in. One strike, no ball. The pitch on the way. Here it is. Swings and he fouls it back and out of play. Into the stands, a souvenir for some lucky fans. A lot of the fans still on their way into the ballpark. Minnesota plays a night game in Washington tonight. Milwaukee's leading Baltimore, 6-4 in the bottom of the seventh. Danny Walton hit another homer. Here's a pitch in the top. strikes in the ball. Dick McAuliffe, the hitter. Now the side. Waiting for the pitch. Here it is. And it's high and possible. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Val Bando playing third base. Campy Campanaris in shortstop. Big Green in second. Don Mincher at first. Dobson ready now, the big right-hander into the windup. Here's a pitch to McCullough. High, pop fly. Short center, Campanera down with the sunglasses. Under the ball, makes the catch. He really had a battle of right sun. McCullough popped to Campanera. That's one out. And it brings up Cesar Gutierrez. G-U-I-T-E-W-R-E-Z. Gutierrez. The shortstop hitting 224. Hit another homer for the Brewers. Here's the pitch on the way, and it's a fastball into a strike ball, Nick Gutierrez. One strike, no ball. One out, nobody on. Now the signal given. Right-handed batter waits. Chuck Dobson's delivery. Bouncing ball should be easy for Green. Big hop, he's got it. He throws the first in time. Ballgame. A wonderful crowd on hand here. In excess of 45,000. There are a lot of empty seats around, which would indicate there's still a lot of fans outside because it's already sold out. Two men are out here. Dallas K line, right handed side of the pitch. Slider low and outside. One ball, no strike. the pitch. Swung and popped up on the infield. Mincher under the ball. In foul territory. Makes the cut. Revive the side. Chuck Dobson raises through the first. One, two, three. Nothing across. We move now to the bottom half of the first inning. No score in the ballgame. Well, there's not too much Major League Baseball action today. Most of it will be tonight in the American League. There are three night games and in the National League, five night games. There's one game going on in the National League. The Giants are ahead of the Chicago Cubs 4-2. to two. They're playing at about the eighth inning there. Willie McCovey has hit a big homer today. His 18th, and there were two on when he hit it. That's Perry against Hand. Well, that was started 2-7 game winner. So the Giants are leading 4-2 to two over the Cubs in the about seventh or eighth inning. 
Tonight, San Diego is at St. Louis at Coombs against Carlton, Los Angeles at Pittsburgh, Sutton against Ellis, New York at Cincinnati tonight. Sadecki, who is 4 and 0, oh, will go against Jim Merritt, who's 10 and 3. Two pretty good left handers going in that one. New York at Cincinnati tonight. Montreal at Atlanta, Stolman against Jim Nash. Nash's record, seven wins and one loss. The pitch for Atlanta. Philadelphia will be at Houston tonight. In the American League this afternoon, the Yankees ahead of the White Sox in the fifth inning, three to one. Horland against Cumberland. Kansas City at Boston has already been rained out. Tonight, Minnesota at Washington. Baltimore's at Milwaukee this afternoon. That was listed as a night game. It was changed. Milwaukee in that game is leading by a score of six to four in the eighth inning. Milwaukee knocked uh, seven-game winner Jim Palmer out of there. Harden relieved him. Robinder started for Milwaukee. Sanders is relieved. And I think that's Ken Sanders, who used to be with the A's. Walton had a homer for Milwaukee. Tonight, Cleveland at California. Dean Chen with a 1-5 record against Rudy May, 3-3. Three and three. So, with not too much action going on in the big leagues today, we'll keep you posted on the three games that are underway. Campanero steps into the batter's box. Boy, this ballpark is really alive today. Beautiful sight to behold. This will be the largest crowd of the year. Campy Campanero is hitting 229. He started the four-run rally that won the ball game, beating out an infield hit after two rounds the six innings. Right-hand batter waiting. Joe Negro. Looks down, has his sign, the pitch is on the way. And it's a fastball high. One ball, no strikes. Joe Necro, a hard-throwing hard right-hander. His older brother, Phil, is with the Braves. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there, a strike off. Joe Necro was with the Cubs. And that was San Diego last year. One ball, one strike. Negro gets set, the pitch on the way, here it is. Curve of beauty, strike two call. Joe Negro from Martins Ferry, Ohio. He'll be 26 in November. Last year he won eight, lost 18. The year before for the Cubs he won 14 and lost 10. Two strikes and a ball. His brother Phil is a knuckleball pitcher. Joe is a fastball and slider pitcher. Here's a curveball, foul tip. Two strikes and a ball. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom half of the first inning. This big crowd is eager. Hungry for a chance to explode here. The A's trying for their fourth in a row. For the first time this year, they're four games above 500. The pitch. There's a line drive in the right center. North is going over, over, over. Makes the count. That's one out. Here's Philippe Ballou, hitting 338. Nothing out of four last night. Four homers, 27 runs. A very enthusiastic crowd here today. Ah, you can't be fun at the old ballpark, especially in a setting like this. Joe Negro gets ready to pitch to Alou. Her ball and her strike call. Philippe is facing Joe Negro for the first time in this league, but he faced him many times in the National League. One strike, no balls, the fifth. Long and pops straight up. The catcher, Bill Friend, shading his eyes in the sun and makes the catch. Two up, two down. Here's Lindsey Jackson coming out. Listen to the reception he'll get. Talk to Bill Freehan. Just tipped his glove and not his back. 
One ball, no strike. Harry Merlin was showing how that ball took off. He was it is right, right up over the shoulder of freehand. He's right in a mask. All right, Reggie waiting now. One ball, no strike. Left hand hitter, big number nine on the back of his uniform. Oh, this crowd was really exploded. He got a hold of one. Here's the pitch. High curveball outside. Two balls, no strike. Two men are gone. Reggie Jack, 24-year-old outfielder. Hits out of a wide straddle, holds the bat at the end. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the second baseman. Up with it. Now he's taking the throw. Still gets it. Dick McAuliffe, the ball was hit sharply, went to his left. Knocked the ball down, recovered, and threw him up. So each team has been retired in order. Nothing across at the end of one full inning. Detroit nothing, the A's nothing. You know, the game victories, he's 5-5. Five and five. He's pitched two shutouts. He shut out the Angels, and he shut out the Yankees. Norm Cash hitting 242, five homers and 18 runs batted in. One out of three last night. Leads it off against Chuck Duff. The outfield deep and a shade towards right. How did the left field stand the pounding those bats in unison? Sounds like a jailbreak. There's a wind up the pitch. And it's a fastball low. One ball, no strikes. Cash leading it off here in the second inning. Now the sign. The delivery, here it is. Swung and a high pop foul over to the stands. Fernandez chasing it. He may have a play. And he does nicely against the screen. One away, and it brings up Willie Horton. Horton hitting 313. Six homers, 39 runs batted in. The run he drove in last night was the 500th of his American League career. Willie Horton. Powerfully built. Boy, he's so reminiscent of Roy Campanella when he stands at the plate. 90 pounder. Here's the pitch by Dobson and it's high. One ball, no strikes. One man gone. Ball game in the second inning. Nothing and nothing. Willie Horton, who hit 262 last year, is batting 313 this season. Now the pitch by Dobson. Swung on, fly ball, right field, Reggie Jackson on the run. On the run, he's there now. He'll make the catch if he does. Reggie Jackson in right field. That's two gone and brings up Jim Northrup. Five in a row retired by Chuck Dobson. Northrup hitting 284. Seven homers, 27 runs out of it. Grover Riesinger coaching at third base. Wally Moses at first base. Here's the windup to pitch to Northrup. It's low and inside, ball one. Looking ahead to the A second will be Fando, Mincher, and Fernandez. One ball, no strikes. Now the wind up the pitch, here it is. And it's outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Two men out, nobody on the pitch. He had a cut and he missed it. Boy, he was... Really going for the downs on that one. A colorful crowd here. The beautiful Coliseum. Perfect day for baseball. You know, Phil Wrigley might have something at all at that. The baseball was meant to be played in the daytime. Unfortunately, economics don't make that possible everywhere. So many people have to work during the day be depriving them of the chance to see baseball. Here's the pitch. One ground ball headed for right base in. Jim Northrup becomes the first base runner with a ground single in the right. Here's Bill Freehand, the catcher. Hitting 229. Eight homers, 24 runs batted in. Freehand will be 29 in November. Went to the University of Michigan. Biggest year in the home run department was in 68 when he hit 25. Right-handed batter. So far this year he's at eight. 
straddles the plate waiting. Now the stretch, the pitch on the way. Dobson's delivery, here it is. Curve in there, a beauty of strike off. One strike, no ball. Elliot Maddox. The third baseman would be next. One strike and no balls. Two men are out. Bill Freehand waiting. Now the pitch. Here it is. He foul tipped on a half swing. He tried to stop. The ball tipped the end of the bat. So it's two strikes and nothing. Two men are gone. Bill Freehand at the plate. A big crowd on hand here. Now the signal. A lead off first base by Northrop. Here's the pitch. And it's outside. Sounds like one of those prison movies. Where you, when the inmates are protesting, you know. That's the way there's rhythmic pounding of the bats out in the left field stand. Sound. Two strikes and a ball. Now the pitch. Here it is. Just barely missed the strike zone with a slider. Dobson thought it was in there. Two balls, two strikes. The A's trying for their fourth in a row. For the first time this season, they're four games above the 500 mark. Two balls, two strikes. Right hand batter waiting. The delivery now. Hey, oh, he's got him picked off. Now he throws down to Green, running him back towards first base. Two Fincher running him the other way. And Campanera is back him up. Right goes to stop the Green, the Mincher, the Campanera. One, three, one, four, three, six. If you're scoring. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. We move into the bottom half of the second inning. No score. June 21st is the day fathers flare. Huh? Uh, it's Father's Day. And the big gift this year is Mr. Levi's Stay Press Slacks with the Gentleman's Flare. You're kidding. Levi's for us dad types with a flare? Sure, why not? More dads are joining the fashion scene every day. The same Mr. Levi's styling, fuller cut for extra comfort. Right on, Harry. And of course, besides the new flare style, there's a great selection for dad. Traditional belt loop models, continental waistbands, and a rousing range of fabrics, patterns, and colors. And stay press. Indeed. They never need ironing. Stay fresh and neat all day, even through double headers. Now here's the perfect dad day gift for the man who has everything, gals, because he never has enough Mr. Levi's stay press slacks. So take a tip. Get him two pair at your favorite men's store. For the second inning, Sal Bando, Don Mincher, and Frank Fernandez will be coming up. Ball game in the second inning. Nothing and nothing. Baltimore trailing at Milwaukee, six to four in the bottom of the eighth. Yankees out in front of the White Sox, three to one. Those Yankees could move to within four and a half games. Bando hitting 267, facing Joe Negro. Bando one out of three last night. Out of sight. Joe Negro ready. The right-hander's pitch is on the way. It's a fastball a little bit low. Ball one. One ball, no strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Ball game in the second inning. Now the signal given. The delivery. Here it is. There's a line drive off the pitcher's glove. Through. Be a base hit. An error on McCollum. A hot shot deflected by Negro to McCollum and it went through his leg. That will bring up Don Mincher. Mincher hitting 256 and one out of four. He's had 12 homers this season. Driven in 31 runs. Left-hand batter digging in. Joe Necro gets set. 
the stretch. The pitch on the way. Into the dirt. Good stop by Bill Brand. Kept that ball from going to the screen. Maddox is playing third base. Gutierrez at short. McConnell at second. Cash at first. Don Mincher digging in. Joe Negro ready. At the belt, the fifth. Here it is. Last ball is low. Ball two. A lot of youngsters on the outside looking in. They're sitting on top of the outside wall. They're not getting a bat that way, but they're at least seeing the ball game. The stretch the fifth. Strike over the outside corner beneath. Breeze is blowing towards left field. Yeah, two or three of those guys will fall in this ballpark before it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> if they do, those youngsters who have that are hold on tightly. Here's the pitch bouncing ball. Two cash. He's going to throw the second one out. Back over to first. Hey, no double play. Oh, they're arguing down there. Here comes Mayo Smith out to argue with Red Flatterney. They thought they had doubled up Mincher. A force out. Barely beating the throw at first base. Here's Frank Fernandez. Hitting 271. Five homers, 12 runs batted in. Mayo Smith. Protesting vehemently. And now walks off the field. Mayo stopped smoking a few months ago. And he, as most people who stopped, he gained a little weight. On him, it looks good. One up, one on. Second inning. Bobby Hoffman coaching third. Charlie Lau at first. The breeze now is shifted, blowing towards right field. The stretch. The pitch to Fernandez. Here it is. Swung at a fastball, and he missed it. Strike one. One strike to no ball. Down K line. Playing a wide right field. Northrop is shifted over towards left. One strike and no ball. Northrop being the center field. Now the pitch on the way. Here it is. A bouncing ball on the third baseline. It may be a tough play. Here's Maddox to throw. Nothing fit. 
Flags over the outside corner. Monday was jockeying around. This is not a spot for the base on ball. This is a spot to hit that ball. Three balls and a strike. Now to stretch the delivery. There's a line shot in the left field. A base hit. A run is in. Monday with a long single in the left field. Has driven in a run. His 16th RBI. Fernandez has scored. Two to nothing in favor of the game. And here's Dick Green. 193. With three homers and nine runs batted in. Green nothing out of three last night. So with one official hit in this inning, the A's have scored twice. On the right-handed batter. Joe Nitro. Big 19 on the back of his gray uniform. Waiting. Chokes up on the bat a little bit. The stretch. The throw to first, the runner back. Really making a racket out there in the left field stands. It sounds good. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner. Here's the peg. They're going to get him, maybe. He's out. A good throw from freehand. McCullough. And Monday trying to steal is cut down. Green the batter with a count of strike one. That free hand, even though Monday had a great jump off first base, really gunned him out of there. There's a pitch on the way. Long and he fouled it back strike two. Two strikes to nothing on Dick Green. Outfield plays him straight away. Two strikes, no balls. Now the pitch. Long and he fouled it back into the stand. Two strikes and nothing. Green the hitter. Nothing in favor of the A's. Here's the pitch. And it's a curveball, a little bit high and outside. Listen to him out there in center field. Here's the pitch. High fly ball and a right field will be caught. K-line drifting back under it. He has Green flies to K-line. Not a very good inning. Two runs, one hit. Were charged, nobody left, and at the end of two full innings, the A's two, the Tigers nothing. You know, a lot of people sell themselves short whenever they travel on the road. They settle for just any service station when it's time to stop for gasoline, or maybe they'll take pot luck when they need a place to stay for the night. And more often than not, when an emergency arises, they just don't know where to turn. Well, in this day and age, that just doesn't make sense. You see, with one Arco credit card from Atlantic Richfield, a man can charge gasoline, repairs, towing, food and lodging, even a Hertz car or truck, and always be sure he'll be dealing with reliable people. Honored at over 24,000 Atlantic Richfield service stations from coast to coast, an Arco card can bring you food and lodging at any Ramada, Treadway, or Friendship Inn, at any Hyatt House Hotel or Hyatt Lodge, or at any Travel Lodge, Jimmons Walker, or Superior Motel. So if you've been selling yourself short, why not stop in at a Richfield station and apply for a new Arco card and get the credit you deserve. Well, pause for identification. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. Right on the nose at 2 o'clock. KNBR in San Francisco. Carry and Monty Moore from the Coliseum. Here's the pitch on the way, swung on by Bill Freehand. A high pop foul over near the stands and out of play. The gentleman makes a fine catch of that pop foul behind the Tigers' dugout. So now the youngster in the group has the bat. 
The Ulster has the ball. All they got to do is swipe a glove, and they got themselves a ball game. Here's the pitch on the way. And it's low and outside. One ball, one strike. Top of the third, Bill Freehand. Right hand hitter waiting. Now the delivery. There it goes, way back. It might be out of here. It could be Monday near the wall now. He's going to get it and he does. Freehand flies deep to Monday. And straight away, center field. One gone. That ball was in on the nose, but it didn't carry as well as the ball had been carrying during batting practice. Here's Elliot Maddox. 22 years old, 5'11", 180 pounds. He's got two homers, five runs batted in, hitting 217. Maddox, the pitch to him. He takes a curveball outside. Two to nothing. Maddox from East Orange, New Jersey. Frank Fernandez needs a new glove. Maddox went to the University of Michigan. He's only been in baseball two years. Played at Lakeland in 68 and Rocky Mount in 69. 22 years old. From the University of Michigan. The wind up the fifth. There's a smash up the middle and it's a base. Base it on a great stop by... And the ball deflected to Campanaris, who would have had a play. Had he been able to pick the ball up cleanly, that would have been something. But it goes for an infield hit. Green took a headlong dive for the ball, deflected it with his glove. Campanaris, who was moving over that way, it was almost deflected right into his hands, in which case he might have had a play at first base. Here's Maddox then on first. And Joe Negro's about it. Right-handed hitter. Negro's had five hits, including a double and a triple. Not a bad hitting pitcher. The delivery. He bunts foul off to the right. One strike to no ball. One man out. Ball game in the top of the third. The A's are leading two to nothing. The year's biggest crowd. The biggest crowd since opening day. The A's third year in Oakland. This will be the largest crowd since that first game they played here. Now to stretch the fifth. He butts it nicely. The only play by Dobson, he tags the runner coming into him. A sacrifice. Dobson unassisted. So here is Dick McCollum. He was nothing out of four last night. Popped up his first time today. We're in the top of the third inning. Two to nothing in favor of the A's. Dick McCollum digs in. Now Dobson is ready. McCollum facing him head on. Now the pitch. Did it hit him? Or did he foul tip it? I think he foul tipped it. McCollum has his back to the catcher. He did foul tip it for a strike. He has his back to the catcher. Facing the pitcher head on. Hitting out of a wide straddle. And then he raises his right foot high in the air before he swings. Here's the pitch. Swung and he missed strike two. Two strikes and nothing. Bottom of the second inning. Top of the third inning. In the bottom of the second, the A's got two to take their two to nothing lead. Now they're two out. A runner in scoring position at second base. Elliot Maddox. Dick McAuliffe waiting. The stretch. The pitch on the way. And here it is. Outside. Boyd Dobson threw the ball exactly where Fernandez was poised. 
Two strikes to nothing. Fernandez moved to the outside part of the plate. Held his glove about two inches outside of the corner of the plate, and that's exactly where Dobson threw it. Two strikes and a ball. The idea with two strikes is to get the ball close enough to tempt the hitter, but not make a good pitch. Here's a curve a little high. Two balls, two strikes. Dobson really working on a tough left-handed hitter, Dick McCullough. Now the sign. Signal given. From the belt. The delivery, here it is. Ground ball hit down to green. He's got it. Over to Mincher. In time to retire the side. So McCullough is still hitless in the series. Nothing out of six. And it's no runs. One hit, no errors. One left. We move now to the bottom half of the third inning. The A's two, the Tigers nothing. Hotline, a new development in the Paris talk. Hotline, a fast-breaking story on the war in Vietnam. Hotline, a presidential news conference. Headline events reported with speed and accuracy through NBC Radio's exclusive hotline service. Incidents that make headline news may occur any time of the day or night anywhere in the world. And NBC's hotline assures you the fastest, most complete and accurate reports of all these events. Hotline supplements the regular hourly newscasts, goes on the air immediately, reporting in detail top stories that cannot be covered in brief. A manned space flight, a vital session of the United Nations, the congressional investigation at the nation's capital, brought to you with the greatest possible speed via hotline. This is Peter Hackus, NBC News, reminding you to keep your dial set right where it is for all the news on the NBC radio network. KNBR 680 San Francisco. We move into the bottom half of the third inning, two to nothing in favor of the A's. Chuck Dobson will be leading it off against Joe Negro. It'll be Dobson, Campaneras, and Alou, and if anybody gets on, Reggie Jackson in this inning. Two to nothing. In favor of the A's. Today we have a helmet day. Two weeks from today will be helmet day. This bat day is certainly a howling success. This ballpark is jammed. A lot of people still haven't been able to get in. Here's a pitch to Dobson, and it's low and outside. One ball and no strikes. I think they ran out of bats. Had over 30,000 bats. They've already run out of them. Here's a pitch on the way. Swung on by Dobson. A high fly ball in the left. Willie Horton under the ball. Thanks, six out. One out. Here's Roy Campaneris. Bert Campaneris. Boy, I tell you, every time I look at that Horton, I, I have Roy Campanello on my mind. He looks so much like him. He's built exactly like Campy. Stands up at the plate just exactly like Campanella used to do. Campy, of course, now, as a result of a tragic auto accident, for years has been in a wheelchair. We saw him at the Hall of Fame induction a couple of years ago in Cooperstown. Campanaris, right-handed hitter. The pitch. And it's a strike call. It can't be lined out. But Northrop will be first time up. Matt Ox playing a shallow third base. Philippe Alou will be next. Now the wind up the pitch. Popped up in the short center field. It'll be caught. Northrop coming in. Under the ball and he has Campanaris flies to Northrop in short center. That's two out and brings up Philippe Ballou. Philippe fouls to the catcher his first stop. Right hand hitter waiting. Signal given. Joe Necro is set. The wind up the pitch. Fastball a little bit high and outside. 
One ball, no strikes, two men are out. Ball game in the third. Negro gets his signal. Now the pitch on the way. There's a high fly ball in the left. It'll be caught. Horton is waiting. He takes it to retire the set. One, two, three, nothing across. That was an easy inning for Negro. And at the end of three, the Oakland A's to the Detroit Tigers, nothing. When Atlantic Richfield Company discovered oil on the north slope of Alaska, the place we call the Arco Circle, it took 100,000 tons of supplies and equipment to get started. It took 100,000 tons of pipes, cement, drill, gravel, parking. orange juice. It took planes that carry 48,000 pounds and cost $4,000 a trip. It took 160 flights to set up one camp and five flights a day to keep it going. It took a specially constructed airstrip. In short, it took the biggest civilian airlift in history. At Atlantic Richfield, we went all the way to Alaska so we can provide your local Richfield dealer with the finest Arco Petroleum products for your car. We move into the top of the fourth. The A's are out in front, two to nothing, and moving in to tell you all about it. Here's Monty Moore. Okay, Harry. Gutierrez will lead it off in the fourth inning. Dobson has allowed two singles so far. That's all. Chuck's had some tremendous games against the Detroit Tigers. He's not had a big winning record against them, but he's always pitched well against this club. Gutierrez hit the plate. Here's the pitch to him. Breaking ball is outside. One ball and no strikes. Boy, we understand people are still trying to get into the parking lots and areas around the ballpark. They're empty seats once you get here. Here's a 1-0 pitch. Right in there, a call strike. I think the seats are sold, but people apparently haven't gotten to them as yet. One ball, one strike count on the right-handed batting, Gutierrez. Pitch, swing and a foul tip, strike two. And Merle Anthony, the plate umpire, I believe, caught another one in the face mat. His family is here today. I met his wife and two lovely little daughters before the game. About eight and ten years old. They're here from Marysville, where he makes his home. They're seeing their daddy banged around a little bit today. That old face mask holding in there. One ball, two strikes. Actually, this Gutierrez we're calling him, G-U-T-I-E-R-R-E-Z. He would pronounce it Gutierrez with the I. Here's a pitch. Oh, that one looked pretty good. Must have been high. It's ball two. Curveball. The I in the name right after the T, G-U-T-I, would have to be pronounced. Gutierrez with a double R E Z. But he says he doesn't care. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Curveball line in the left center field. The Lou's gonna have to hurry. He's over there. He's got it. Now there's one out in inning number four, and the batter is Al Keyline. Al's been on a little bit of a hot streak. Bagged his 2,500th career hit last night. There are two other Detroit Tiger players who had more hits than he has had. But he has had more hits than all other active American League players. Pitch time. Low for a ball. Only two players in the American League who are still active have hit more home runs in their career than Al. Dobson's 1-0 pitch to him. Strike on the outside corner by knee high. Boy, what a beautiful sight this place is filled up. The biggest crowd since Casey Stengel Day here. Here's the wind, the 1-1 pitch. Fastball line to right. He's got a base hit. It takes one up, and Jackson flags it down. K-line is on. He hit that ball right where it was pitched. For Norm Cash, big first baseman who hit seven home runs against the A's last season. And several of them were big ones.
Norm Cash. This guy is a barrel of laughs. He's a lot of fun. Tremendous sense of humor. He's hitting 242. There's a high fly ball in a deep right field. Way back goes Jackson. Back goes Mundy. They'll neither one get it. It's over the fence, and we've got a tie ball game. Norm Cash hits the first pitch to him over the right center field wall to tie it up, and it's just that simple with a long ball. Boy, I'll tell you, he really does rip the A. That's his sixth home run of the year. The six that Chuck Dobson has given up in 81 innings. Cash was talking before the ball game around the batter's cage during batting practice how he hated to hit against Dobson. So this guy's really something. Here's a pitch down to Willie Horton. It's high and outside for a ball. Boy, he can be going along and not do anything and get to Oakland and just wear the baseball out. And they're all just like that. They put his club back in there. Horton takes a strike. It's one and one. Boy, Willie's starting to clobber that ball, too. He's hitting 311. The wind is a high fly ball in a deep right field. Way back goes Jackson. Back goes Mundy. They'll neither one get it. It's over the fence, and we've got a tie ball game. Chuck Dobson has given up in 81 innings. Cash was talking before the ball game around the batter's cage during batting practice how he hated to hit against Dobson. This guy's really something. Here's a pitch down to Willie Horton. It's high and outside for a ball. Boy, he can be going along and not do anything and get to Oakland and just wear the baseball out. And they're all just like that. They put his club back in there. Horton takes a strike. It's one and one. Boy, Willie's starting to clobber that ball, too. He's hitting 311. The wind is blowing towards right center field. And that ball needed just enough help from the wind to get out. Now the 1 1 pitch. There's a pop foul ball back. It's not going to quite get upstairs. Count is a ball and two strikes. One out, nobody on. Norm Cash took care of that with a two-run homer. Here's a pitch to Horton. It's outside, ball two. The A's play here again tomorrow afternoon at 1.30. It should be a good game. Catfish Hunter against Mickey Lolich. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. High, ball three. And pitching carefully to Willie Horton has worked the count full at three and two. Big powerful left fielder of the Tigers moves that bat back and forth to get ready for the delivery, and here it comes. Swinging strike three, Dobson through the ball by. That's Chuck's first strikeout today. And I hear Jim Northrup, who had the first base hit, a single to right in the second inning. Northrup, a left-handed batter who hit four grand slam home runs one season. The big year the Tigers had two years back when they were world champions. Pitch to him is a curve in there, call strike. Here's 
Dobson winding again in the pitch. Way inside. One ball and one strike. Boy, I know there are a lot of disappointed people here today who didn't or haven't as yet gotten into the ballpark and are close enough to get here. Very good friend of ours, longtime friend, Vic Hyden. Drove his two young boys all the way from Nevada this morning. And the people that have their tickets aren't here yet. Here's a pitch fouled off down the left field line. And they've been waiting out here at this ballpark since about 10, 10.30 this morning. Couldn't get into the ball game after driving all the way from Reno. One and two the count. Here's a pitch. Swing and a foul down. all tied up two and two. The A's have been in a little bit of a rut as far as run scoring. We've scored four runs the last three games. The opposition has scored one run, two runs, and two runs. So four has been enough to win in three straight games. Here's a pitch. High fly ball. Foul ground. Off third. Bando chasing it near the stand. Hanging there, Sal. He's got it. Side is retired here in the fourth inning. Tigers, two hits, they didn't leave anybody on, and the score in the middle of the fourth is two and two. Late news from KNBR. Robert Finch says his health played no part in the decision to remove him as health and welfare secretary. Finch will become a special advisor to the president. Finch reportedly made the move reluctantly. He'll be replaced at HEW by Elliot Richardson, an undersecretary of state noted for his administrative ability. Senate Democratic leader Mike Mansfield is again called for short-term wage and price controls. Arson is considered a possible cause of this morning's fire that caused $400,000 damage to the Playboy Club in West Hollywood. A small army of lawmen arrested 34 Indians on trespass charges at a PG&E campground near Redding at dawn. Fresno County has started counting the ballots that were cast in Tuesday's election. It took four days to reprogram the computers. Another bomb was found under a police car in the Berkeley Police parking lot during the night. It failed to go off because of a defective fuse. And that's the latest from KNBR. Well, it looks like a porcupine farm around here right now. They just asked all the kids with bats to raise their bats in the air over their head, and it's quite a majestic sight to see here. They said wave them. They should have put wave gently. You know, it's always an amazing fact to me that two or three kids don't leave the ballpark on that day with skulls bashed in when those foul balls come into the stand it's bound to be a temptation to try to hit it back out but don't ever do that here's reggie jackson our game is tied two and two jackson bando and mentor jackson his first time up grounded to second base Get Joe Necro, a right-hander. Reggie sets at the plate. Here's the pitch. Swing and a roller foul down the first baseline. The A's are out on the threshold of really going big with winning. They won four games in a row over Chicago in that series up there, May 22nd through 24th. Then lost one, won two out of three to California. Came home, lost two out of three to Cleveland, but beat Baltimore two out of three, and we've now won three in a row again. And we could get this guy going. This club could move right on up. We've knocked a game and a half off the twin fleet in the last week. Here's the pitch. A little high with a fastball, one ball and one strike. The A's appear to be about ready to put everything together. Here's a 1-1 pitch. There's a drive to left field. It's going to be extra bases. Up against the fence on one hop. Martin fields the ball. Jackson goes flying in the second with a double. Well, that's half a home run. that carried to the left field fence on one hop. It bounced off that wooden wall so hard that Horton 
Field it in on the fly. Now here is Sal Bando in a tied up game. Let's see if Foul tries to go to the right side. Bando has 34 runs batted in. Nobody out. Necro, the pitcher, moves to the front of the rubber now. Plants that right foot on it. Now here's the pitch. Bando fouls it off to the right side. somebody right in the crowd out there. One strike count on Sal Bando. Sal's got ten home runs. He's hit two off in the last three days. Right now he's settled for a single or even a ground ball to the right side just to move Jackson over to scoring position at third where he can score on a fly ball or a ground out. Necro will finally be trying to work you inside. Here's a pitch. Curve ball hit right back to the mound. Jackson's going to hold it second. Bando is out at first base. Sal trying to give himself up to hit that ball to the right side. Missed doing it because he hit it to the mound on one hop. So Jackson wisely held on at second, and that takes some pretty good reflexes to do that. Because your normal reaction when a ball is hit is to break towards the next bag. Don Mincher, and they're having a conference about him on the mound. Mincher's been hitting the ball sharply, and he's been making his hits pay off. He's hit safely in the last four games. Last night, he had one hit and knocked in a run. He scored one of the A's runs today. One out, tie game. Base hit away from taking the lead. Mincher the bat over his left shoulder. Here's the pitch. Curve ball popped up behind the plate. It's going to be out of play, though. Oh, Don loves that high, slow breaking pitch, and he really had a cut at it. He's hit 12 home runs. The last one he hit was on May 30th against Cleveland here at the Coliseum, the first game of the homestand. Bobby Hoffman calls Reggie Jackson down for a little conference. Gutierrez had been sneaking back in behind Reggie. Last night, we got Monday picked off at second base. That's probably a precautionary type conference. Crowd chanting go. Jackson is ready to go. Here's a pitch to Mencher. Here's a hot shot to the first baseman. Jackson holds at second base as Cash steps on the bag at first. He didn't even gamble on that one. Hit deep to the right side of the infield. So now there are two down, a runner at second, and here's Frank Fernandez. That's the ball we would have wanted out of Mencher if Bendos would have gone out to the right side of the infield and moved Jackson over. That's all it would have taken to score, but Sal's ball went right straight to the mound. Frank Fernandez. He talked the roller down the third baseline his first time up and got on on the throwing air. The pitch to him. Slider hits the outside corner and calls strike. Reggie Jackson at second carrying the go-ahead run. He's had only two hits off Necro. He takes a wide early down off second base now. Necro doesn't like it. Steps off the rubber to drive him back in. With two down, the infielders won't be quite as close to Jackson at second. He can get a little bigger lead. Now the pitch. There's a high fly ball in the right center field. Hit deep. That ball is carrying well, but Kaline will catch it short of the warning track. And the A's lose a great chance to score here in the fourth inning. On. The score after four is Tigers two and the A's two. A car that's squeaking, knocking, or backfiring is calling your attention to something. It's telling you it needs service. But sometimes cars keep secrets and they don't alert you as to what's going wrong. 
That's why regular checkups are so important for any automobile and why when it's time for a checkup, so many people take their car to a Richfield station. You see, your Richfield dealer is really prepared to give your car the extra service it deserves. In the first place, he's experienced and he's trained. But beyond the experience and the training, there's something else. There's the Richfield service guy, the informative manual that tells him all he needs to know about your automobile. Any car may have problems that aren't easy to spot, such as frayed wires, rusted counter pins, and tiny oil leaks, which never make a lot of noise. And that's why it's nice to know that when it comes to servicing your car, Richfield doesn't play things just by ear. They know what they're doing. Well, let's check up on some other baseball today. Milwaukee beat Baltimore 6-4. to four. Rob Bender, the winner, is second win of the year. Palmer, the loser, 7-3. 12,076 saw that game in Milwaukee. Milwaukee Brewers, 6, and the Baltimore Orioles, 4. The Giants beat the Cubs today 5-3 to three for Gaylord Perry's eighth victory of the year. Bill Hands lost his fourth. 34,465 saw that one. Here's a pitch to Bill Freehand, and it's in there for a call strike. Freehand and a fly ball to center field his first time up. It was caught. The Yankees beat the White Sox 3-1. to one. Cumberland the winner over Horland. Pitch it outside for a ball at New York, 22,424 today. Well, whereas last night we had one of the smallest crowds in baseball, today I bet we have one of the biggest. One ball, one strike. Chuck Dobson winding. The pitch, a little high, ball two. If you saw all these bats up today, you make a lot of toothpicks. 24,000 or so of them are given away and thousands more coupons. Here's a pitch. Curve is high, ball three. That one was close. Dobson turns his back on the catcher, works on the mound a little bit. I think he thought that one was in there. Three balls, one strike on Bill Freehand, big Tiger catcher. Time is lined deep in the left center field. It's carrying way back. She's going out of here. A home run. He had to come in with a three ball, one strike count. And freehand hit it out of here. Dobson is furious. Umpire threw him the ball. He didn't even catch it. He let it just fall right on his feet. Let's pause here for station identification. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. This is KNBR in San Francisco. That's the second home run of the game for the Tigers. They lead three to two. Here's Maddox and the pitch is high for a ball. Al Downing starts to work in the A's bullpen. That is the ninth home run of the year for Bill Freehand. Pitch. Right in there, call strike. Freehand leads the Tigers in home runs this year. His average is low, 229. Now Dobson's wide. Here's the 1 1 pitch to Maddox. He tried to bunt it. It was a tough one to bunt. It was over his head. Or not over his head, maybe, but certainly over the strike zone. Fernandez had to stand up to catch the ball. That's how high it was, and that's a pretty tough one to bunt. One ball and two strikes. The pitch curve high, two and two. And comes to the plate again. Swing and a miss. Strike three through a breaking ball. So Maddox is out. It's the second strikeout for Chuck in the game. And here's the pitcher, Joe Necro. They say that Necro, whose brother is a great knuckleball pitcher, throws it just once in a while. He throws it quite a bit on the sideline. 
And they're warming up prior to the game. They say he'll throw it once in a while, but he doesn't throw it much in a game. Now there's something he's working on for when he can no longer throw quite as hard. Here's a pitch. Curve is outside. in the fifth it's three to two Tigers leading that ball is low two and oh now well we've had some great crowds here on our promotion days cap day we had so many people we ran out of caps so many people today that ran out of bats called strike gets right in there two and one days a few people were running out of money <laughs> <laughs> two and one on necro oh beautiful curve had his foot in the bucket that time necro couldn't have reached it with a long pole strike it's called two and two here's Dobson's next pitch Swing the foul down. It's a cool day, but beautifully sunny. Refreshing compared to that heat we've been having. Here's a pitch. Outside, ball three. Be another sunshiny afternoon game tomorrow. Starting at 1.30, and Catfish Hunter, our top winner, will go against Mickey Lolich. Dobson needs a strike here at 3 and 2 to the pitcher. There's a line drive deep in the left field. A lose going back, and he is in front of the fence about five feet to grab it. Hey, Necro gave that one a pretty good charge. Dobson getting hurt a little on those pitches where he's having to come in. Was the first pitch to cash it out of here for a two run homer that tied the game. Here's Dick McCollum. Pitch is low, ball one. It can really hurt you when you get a leadoff guy on in the middle of the batting order, fourth, fifth, and sixth men coming up. And it's a leadoff double as the A's had with Jackson the last inning and can't move him past second. There's a high fly ball out behind second base. Campy's going back. Monday coming in. Campy takes his cap off and finds the ball and makes the catch. Maybe the bill of his cap was getting in the way where it shades most people. Campy made the grab and that retires the side. We're at the halfway point of the game and here's the score. The Detroit Tigers three and the Oakland A's two. Hey girls, we've got a little suggestion for you. The best way to make your man shape up. Give him Mr. Levi's Stay Press Slack. And there's never been a better time. Father's Day, you know, is June 21st. So shape up Dad with a pair or two of Mr. Levi's. It's the way to get Dad really with it. And Mr. Levi's is a gift he really wants. Darn right, Monty. Mr. Levi's are fuller cut for super comfort. And Stay Press means you never have to iron them. Nobody but Levi's makes Stay Press Slacks. They stay neat and fresh all day, whatever the action. And girls, what a selection. Great fabrics, patterns, and colors. Traditional belt loop or continental waistband styling. Mr. Levi's will put Dad right in front of the fashion parade in the most comfortable slacks he's ever worn. So look for the Dad's Day tag on Mr. Levi's Stay Fresh Slacks at your favorite men's store. will pitch to Rick Monday. Dick Green and Chuck Dobson in the fifth inning. It's three to two. The A's have been having to come from behind to win games lately, and here we are again. We were in the unfamiliar spot of leading two to nothing when Norm Cash followed an Al Keyline single with a home run over the right center field wall to tie it, and then Bill Freehand rocketed one out of here over the left field wall. We got the fireworks guy all poised out behind the center field gate 
we can see some fireworks which are set off when an A's player hits a homer. Okay, it's Rick Monday up there. Rick got a base hit and knocked in a run for the A's in the second inning. Rick's hit in five games in a row on his latest streak. Batting 287. He's hung right in there from 275 up to as high as 400 for a long time. If any peanut man is listening with a transistor radio, Hal Ashby's having a, a fit up here for peanuts. Here's a pitch to Monday. Swing and a miss on a slow curve. Strike one. Ashby's a good bet to buy two or three packs. He and that Cameron go through them pretty fast. buzzing crowd. One strike count on Rick Monday, standing off to the side. Boy, you made a catcher last night I'd like for 150,000 people to have seen. Pitch, outside, it's a ball one and one. Here's the next pitch. Strike dropped it right in there. The run that Rick knocked in was the first RBI he had had since May 20th. It's been almost three weeks since he had knocked in a run. Though he'd had a lot of base hits, there just hadn't been anybody on in front of him when he hit. Here's a pitch. Hi, that Negro can throw pretty hard. at 2-2 two, two, the pitch. Low, it's ball three. Rick's got a pretty good eye at the plate. He's walked 22 times. Struck out 50 times. That's the only thing that's out of ratio in his statistics column. The Tigers have really put this Necro to work. This is the 13th game he started. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Fouled away by Rick. That one went all the way to the third deck. See, lots of evidence here today of people who were here on cap day because there are thousands and thousands of Kelly Green caps down in the crowd. Got his full. Necro ready to work, and here it comes. Walk team, and there's the start for the A's. Got the tying runner on. We can get him around with the bottom third of the batting order. Here is Dick Green. Boy, Green, he got back in the lineup last night for the first time in a while, and believe me, he had some tough plays at second base on double plays. He got hung up down there twice, once when Mando couldn't get the ball out of his glove. And he had to wait, and the other time when Latchman couldn't get it out of his glove, and he had to wait, and he got clobbered both times. Green is batting 193. Monday leading away at first base. They cross the stretch. Three to two, Tigers lead. Monday's going. Green fouls it back. Look out, Harry, you may get it. Oh, just off from the boot to our left. We need a longer net. I've been saying that all year. Came in the booth just off to our left. One strike count on Dick Green. Monday was running on that last pitch. He draws a throw. Hey, Ashby, somebody just threw a peanut in our booth out of the upper deck to help you out there. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat it. It never, it never got to Ashby. I threw it to the shortstop carry, and he gobbled it up. <laughs> One strike count on Green. Necro holding a long time to pitch. Greeny fouls it back upstairs. No balls, two strikes. Test 
testing the advertising power of our network today. Advertised for a peanut salesman for Ashby. <laughs> We'd better get one pretty soon. There came another one. <laughs> Here's the 0-2 pitch to Green now. Nope, they're going to throw the first. out ahead of Greeny. Here's a pitch. High and inside, ball one. Green has three home runs. He knocked in nine runs. Dick never really got going this year in the average department, though he had base hits in his first six games he played. One ball, two strikes. Monday's got a big lead at first. Draws a throw and goes back in on his stomach. Umpire there is John Red Flaherty. They don't call him Red because of his hair. It's silver gray. Another throw. Mundy has to hit the dirt again. He's widened that lead out quite a bit, and Necro doesn't like the looks of it. He's keeping Mundy a little closer. Hayes need a run to tie. We've got that man on now. Greeny could get an extra base hit. Mundy, as fast as he is, could probably score. Another throw, and Rick almost stumbled getting back to first that time. He asked for time. He's going to have to get a little dirt off of him. Got in his eyes as he dived back in. His feet slipped a little bit as he hit the dirt that time. He had to crawl the last step. Monty, what would you call that bridal white now? <laughs> that uniform the A's are wearing today, wedding gown white. It's not exactly wedding gown white, is it? It looks like big pen dirt. Necro throws again. Rick just crow hops back on there this time. Looks like something that happened to the wedding gown after a jilted suitor got a sweeter suitor got hold of it or something. Another throw to first. They're afraid of Monday taking off. I don't know if they count the pitches on Necro, but if they count those throws to first, it adds a lot of pitches. The crowd's really chanting go. Another throw to first, holds him in. The Tigers must think they have a sign. One ball, two strikes to count on Green. Nobody out. Necro holding a long time, throws the first again, and Monday Hot dives back in again. Now Freehand is going out to talk to him. but the A's did have a hit and run play on on one of the earlier counts on Green. In fact, Monday's stolen only five bases. He's been thrown out three times. But Necro doesn't want to give him any advantage over there, and as a matter of fact, he's trying to take away what advantage you get by leading off. But he may be losing a little concentration on the batter. Now he sets. Here's the pitch. Here's a bouncing ball, a third. Booted momentarily by the third but he gets it away in a second in time for the fourth there. No double play. Man excluded that ball, and with the luck would have it, it came right up in his hands again. He was able to get Monday at second base, and the difference in Monday being able to start on a ball at green head and not being able to start is that they would not have gotten him at second base on that fumble ball if it had been started. Oh, that Maddox showed me some kind of hands in. Feel it cleanly, but he got it enough that it bounced right up in front of him, and he grabbed it with a bare right hand and fired to second for the fourth green, beating the throw to first. Now here is Chuck Thompson with one out. They'll be looking for the butt here. It's three to two, Detroit leading. Here's the pitch. Thompson bunts it out towards the mound, and it's a beauty. Only one play, and that's the first. He throws to McCollum covering. Necro made the throw. Now, if Campy can get a base hit, the A's could tie it up here. Dick Green is at second, carrying the tying run. The A's had Jackson at second, with nobody out in the fourth inning. They didn't get him moved. 
Caponera is 0 for 2 today. He lined out into right center field in the first inning and popped to center field with the next time up. Campy has knocked in 12 runs this year. He's hit four home runs. Choking way up on the bat handle. Necro ready, throws, curve, low, ball one. Tigers ahead on two homers, one by Cash with a man on, and the go-ahead homer by Bill Freehand. Greeny comes away from second base. Here's a pitch. Campy swings and misses a curve. He was way out front on that breaking ball. One ball and one strike. The A's are seeing Necro for the very first time. But they are starting the third go-round against him here today, and that's usually enough to find out what a guy has. His ERA is not too impressive, 3.53, and his record is four wins, five losses starting today, but he's been very sharp here. A's have only two hits. Here's the pitch. Strike gets right in there at one and two now. Two down and a man on. We're in the last half of the fifth inning at Jam Pack Stadium. Coliseum in Oakland, the home of the Swingin' A's and the Raiders. One two pitch. Curve swung on and missed strike three. Campy chased a bad pitch that time. Well, Necro survives another man in scoring position, getting his first strike out of the ball game. After five innings, it's the Tigers three and the A's two. This is NBC News, San Francisco. Ray James, NBC News, Chicago. Despite an overnight curfew, about 2,000 University of Illinois students gathered the studio. William Lenauer, NBC News, Washington. A nationwide railroad strike would have an immediate impact on the nation's economy and affect transportation for one... Stan Major, NBC News, Saigon. A good deal of enemy activity now centers around the Southern Mountains region of the Mekong Delta. Ray Cullen, NBC News, Sacramento. Governor Reagan today renewed criticism of leaders of last week's disturbances in Santa Barbara. Angus Crowley, NBC News, Fosco. Guterres, the shortstop for the Tigers, will lead off. Then K-Line and Cash against Chuck Dobson. There's a sign up on the scoreboard that certainly is of note. It's Helmet Day here, Saturday, June 20th. A's helmet, that's a replica of the ones that the A's wear at bat. Be giving away to everybody 14 and under two weeks from today. Be time to start getting tickets in advance for that now. Here's the first pitch to Guterres. It's foul back, strike one. Also have a T-shirt day coming up, and everybody 16 and under will get T-shirts on that day. Cesar Guterres. The pitch time. power type stances where he really never looks ready. Got that bat almost out in front of him and as the pitcher swings into his windup, he draws it back. Two strikes to count on Gutierrez to lead it off here in the sixth. Dobson's pitch, sidearm curveball, and he went down swinging. Oh, that was a bad pitch, but a great one with two strikes on you. Dobson went sidearm for the first time today. That's a pitcher's pitch, and Gutierrez had to chase it because he was in a hole. Dobson's third strike out. He hasn't walked anybody. Necro's walked only once. Here's Al Kaline. Al got a base hit to start the Tigers in the fourth. Pitch to him. Strike on the outside corner. Al went right to right field with the pitch that was thrown to him. He was on when Cash belted one out of here. One 
strike pitch. That ball fouled off, and that K-line doesn't get cheated on many swings. He had all of it right then. You know, I think if you come to the ball game tomorrow, you look for the two hustlingest guys on the field, you'll see two guys who are in their 30s, Alou and K-line. Sidearm curve from Dobson was over the plate, apparently a little high. The real stars of the game play every play of every game as hard as they can. Here's the pitch. It's high, ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Fernandez must have thought that was a call third strike. It popped out of his bed and he hustled to pick it up. He's going to tag K-Line. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Dobson gave K-Line a great big leg kick in motion and pulled the string on him. Though Chuck has struck out the first two men in the sixth, here is Norm Cash, his longtime nemesis. got a short swing for a home run swinger, but it's got a lot of power in it. Pitch time, fastball swung on and missed strike one. Playing at Tiger Stadium, the left-handed hitter's delight. Cash has hit a lot of them there. One strike count on him, here's the pitch. Strike two, Dobson is throwing some smoke up there right now. It's rare back and right on down Powder River with those first two. It's three to two, Tigers lead. In the next inning, we'll have Alou, Jackson, and Bando. The pitch, smoked him again, swinging strike three. Dobson got mad and just fired three in a row right by Norm Cash. Struck out the side here in the sixth inning. And in the middle of the sixth, the score is the Detroit Tigers three in the Oakland A's two. The Arctic Tundra, 12 inches of vegetation covering frozen ground a 1,000 feet deep. When Atlantic Richfield Company discovered oil on Alaska's north slope, the place we call the Arco Circle, we found out if you disturb the tundra, you cause erosion. A tire track can cause a 50-foot gorge. We stopped driving our trucks across it and started experiments with 13 different kinds of grass seed so that if erosion occurred, we'd be ready. The seeding has to be done by hand. The fertilizing has to be done by helicopters. And the grasses will have to be incredibly hardy to make it. But if they do, there will be a way to protect the delicate tundra forever. At Atlantic Richfield Company, we're doing this because we believe drilling for oil and conservation go together. We went all the way to Alaska to drill for oil so we can provide your local Richfield dealer with the finest Arco Petroleum products for your car. Well, we're ready to go into the top half of the sixth inning, and before the A's get some runs to take the lead here in this inning, let's pause for station identification. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. This is KNBR in San Francisco. to lead it off for the A's. Felipe well, hitting 338 when the game started today. He dropped only three points and two at bat. He popped to the catcher and flied to left field. He'll be followed by Jackson and Bando. A lucky inning last night, Monty. See what lightning will strike again. Got to do it. Get a little short trip around the chair to change things around again today. All right, Necro nods approval of the first sign. Here's a pitch. Slider, ooh, he threw that ball good. Strike call. Quick breaking slider to the outside part of the plate. He seemingly has had a good one today. The pitch. Line drive, right center field. K-line is going to be there. He's got it one down. now is 0 for 10. Look 
biggest flop he's been in this year. Here's Reggie Jackson. Reggie got a double into the corner in left field his last time up. Move his average to 199. Incidentally, Joe Rudy, who's been playing left field and doing a good job of it, is in the military reserve duty this weekend. He and Dave Duncan in the eighth have young catcher Gene Tennis up here. Here's a pitch to Jackson. Little high ball one. Boy, nothing would set this crowd on fire like a tater by Jackson. And out in Reggie's regiment. They're waiting for it. One ball, no strikes. The pitch. Swing and a miss. He tried to go, I believe, to the opposite field again. He swung a little late, if not, on a breaking ball to the outside part of the plate. Jackson has eight home runs and 18 runs batted in. You know, Bill Freehand leads the Tigers with eight home runs. Here's a 1-1 pitch. There's a foul ball out of play. It's headed for the upper deck. Landed a little short of the upper deck. Way foul down the right field line. So Negro is ahead of Jackson at one ball, two strikes. Negro turns around and sees a glance at the scoreboard, which shows a ball, two strikes, and the Tigers leading three to two. Here's the pitch. Jackson fouls it off the other way this time. So he's hit a one to his relatives in right field and one in left. Now one for the Cousins in right center. One and two count. the pitch. High. Necro threw a fastball. Count two balls, two strikes. Mando kneeling on deck. Jackson at the plate. So he's hit a one to his relatives in right field and one in left. Now one for the Cousins in right center. Here's the pitch. High. Necro threw a fastball. Count two balls, two strikes. Mando kneeling on deck. Jackson at the plate. Necro's pitch. Slow curve. He struck him out swinging. Threw a good slow curveball that time to Jackson, and he went out of there. That's only the second strike out of the game for Negro, and here's Bando. Boy, I had a feeling about Reggie right then. I could just see him hit that ball out of here. For those of you who follow horse racing, High Echelon has just won the Belmont Stakes. Here's Sal Bando. The pitch. Outside. Necro has stopped the A's on two hits so far. We've been having about one good inning a game. Here's a pitch. Outside. Last night it was a four-run sixth inning. Dobson is pitching well today. A couple more. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Bando pops it foul out of play. Had a good cut at that pitch. Two and one. If Sal could get on, Don Mitchell will be next. Now the pitch. Bando. That was the count on Freehand when Freehand hit his home run out of here. Now Necro pitches. There's a liner in the right center field, a base hit. Al Kaline over to his right to pick it up. Bando's going to try for two. Kaline's got a good arm, but he throws it off line. It's a double score. for a double. 
double. And now here's Don Mincher. With first base open and Frank Fernandez coming up next. See what kind of good pitches they'll get Mincher here at Benny. and this is the third time we've had that tying run at second base and couldn't get him in. This time, maybe Mincher can do it. Negro backs off the rubber for a moment. Norm Cash has been over to the mound to say something to Negro and pointed to the on-deck area where Fernandez is. Here's a pitch. He tried to hold up on his swing, but he couldn't. It was high and inside. It goes for strike one. Tiger dugout trying to get Gutierrez the shortstop to move over behind second. Mencher got his hit last night right up the middle and knocked in a run. Necro got a big strike right then. He got down to go for a pitch that Don didn't want to go for. Here's a pitch. Ball hits foul past first base. So Necro is out ahead of Mencher. He's not wasting anything on him. He's going to try to get him. Fernandez got home run power. They don't want to put that lead run on base. Tigers three, the A's two, last of the six. at second. A hit away from tying the game. No two count. The pitch wasted outside. Ball one. Detroit. 
the biggest crowd since the first American League game ever played here today. Here's a pitch curve into the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh, Fernandez, Monday, and Green. The bullpen is alive down there. Diego Segui and Paul Lindblad. One ball, no strikes. The pitch, a little low. Ball two. One away in the top of the seventh. Two home runs have accounted for the three runs that Detroit has scored. Here's the pitch. Strike over the outside corner to knee. Two balls and a strike. Jim Northrup, who's hit seven homers, batting 284. Left-hand batter swings that batter on. Dobson fifth. Swung late and fouled out of play. That evens it up with two balls, two strikes. Northrup, a tall, rangy left-hand hitter. Mark Dobson gets set. Northrup's trim with the Tigers now. This is seventh year. Two balls, two strikes. Now the pitch by Dobson. Here it is. He had a cut and he fouled it back. The count stays even up. Two balls, two strikes. Cash hit a two-run homer in the fourth. Bill Freehan hit a 3-1 pitch for a home run in the fifth. Two runs the A's made were unearned in the second, so they're due for an attack against young Joe Necro. Two balls, two strikes. Now the pitch to the left-hand hitter. Here it is. Line drive in the left center of base hit. Here's North from around first base. He'll hold. Alou gets the ball back into the infield. Jim Northrop lined a single over Campanaris's head. Here's Bill Freehand. His homer in the fifth gave the Tigers a present 3-2 lead. One out, one on. Out a signal given. Elliot Maddox will be next. The stretch the fifth. Curveball, strike call. He may have gotten away with a pitch that time. That was a high strike to the inside part of the plate. Freehand took it. One strike and no ball. One on, one out. Big right-handed hitter waiting. Now Dobson gets set. Called for time. Freehand in his ninth year with the Tigers. Big catcher, stands 6'3", weighs 200. Throw to first, the runner back. One on, one out. Lindblad and Segui are warm in the bullpen. Right-handed batter digging in. The stretch. Here's the pitch. He swings at a bad ball, and he misses. Two strikes and nothing. Freehand chased the slider high and away. One on, one out. Ball game in the seventh. Three to two in favor of the Tigers. Well, it'd be a shame to lose this one before such a tremendous crowd. Now the pitch, sidearm curve outside. Two strikes and a ball. Frank Fernandez behind the plate. He'll be leading off the bottom of the seventh. Jim Northrup, the runner at first, one out. Thompson getting ready. Two strikes and a ball. The stretch. The pitch. Here it is. He struck him out. Freehand. Had a very weak swing at that ball. Looked like he may have tried to stop. It was a slider on the outside corner anyway. And that's two away. Here's Elliot Maddox. He singled in the third. He struck out in the fifth. Merrill Anthony, the plate umpire, picking up some loose papers. They haven't announced the crowd as yet. It'll be in excess of 45,000. Right-hand hitter waiting. Out of stretch. Throw over to first. Runner back. 
Elliot Maddox singled and struck out. Right-handed batter the pitch. Ground ball hit the Bando's left. Nice stop. The throw to second. He's out. Bando made a fine play to his left. And through to Northrup. Through the green to force Northrup. And it's no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We move now to the bottom of the seventh. Everybody up on their feet with a score. The Tigers three, the A's two. You know, some fashion experts predict American men will soon be carrying handbags instead of wallets. Well, that sounds absurd to you? But I don't forget these things don't happen overnight. They evolve over a period of time. And for quite some time now, wallets have been bulging, splitting, and growing to enormous size. You see, it's all those old-fashioned bulky credit cards. The more you have to carry, the more your wallet suffers. And if the present trend continues, the wallet, as we know it, just won't survive the strain. That's why Atlantic Richfield considers its new Arco credit card a step in the right direction. You see, one credit card honored at over 24,000 service stations, hundreds of hotels and motels, and all Hertz offices from coast to coast, is a sure bet to slim down a wallet, not make it lumpier. It means there'll be that many fewer cards you'll have to carry. So if you'd like to join in turning back the trend, why not stop in at a Richfield station and see about a new Arco credit card? Chances are it's more your bag. Well, some 45,000 people on their feet. See a big banner there, the Gray Avenue Athletic Club. You see a lot of A's caps, a lot of the green bats. A gale a day at the old ball bar. A crowd of an excess of 45,000. Brilliant sunshine. A tight ball game. What more could you want on a Saturday afternoon? Here is Fernandez. He's nothing out of two. Right-handed batter. Bottom of the seventh. It's late. We need some run. Fernandez, Monday, and Green come up in this inning. And probably a pinch hitter if anybody gets on. For Dobson. Joe Necro's allowed only three hits. Single by Monday in the second. A double by Jackson in the fourth. And a double by Bando in the sixth. The first pitch swung on in this. One strike and no ball. Nobody on and nobody out. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Right hand hitter waiting. Now the pitch. There's a high pop foul. Everybody chasing it. Everybody chasing. Gutierrez is there. And hey, Maddox. Couldn't make the catch. No play. He had to run a long way into the A's bullpen. It looks like Gutierrez had the best angle on the ball, but Maddox could yell for it. The ball went right through his arm. No, so, Fernandez is in the hole. Two strikes and nothing. The outfield shades him towards left field. The A's trailing by a run. A tense ball game. Two strikes, no balls. The fifth. High inside. Fernandez hitting 271. Going into the game. Two strikes and a ball. Now ready for the pitch from Necro. Struck him out on a curveball. Fernandez goes down swinging. Necro is only fan three. And here's Rick Monday, singled and walked. The A's wasted their best chance in the fourth when Reggie Jackson let off with a double to left. The Bando bounced for the pitcher. Mincher grounded to Cash, and Fernandez flied out to Kayla. One out, nobody on, bottom of the seventh. Francona's going to bat for Green next. Necro's pitch. Like a good fastball. One strike, no off. One out, nobody on. Three to two, Detroit. Necro's pitch. There's a high fly ball. Right field, easy out. K-line waiting, and he takes it. 
One day flies to Kalai. Two up, two down. Doing not a thing with Necro. He's only allowed three hits. Frank Cohn is the pinch hitter. Hitting 250s, have one homer, six runs batted in. Chuck Dobson would be next. Two men are out. In the seventh inning, three to two, Detroit. Left hand hitter. Frank Cohn hit one homer this year as a pinch hitter. Now the pitch. Strike at the knees, a good fastball. One strike and no ball. Two men away. Nobody on base. Ball game in the set. The pitch. Outside. That evens it up at a ball and a strike. Grand corner batting for Green. Tony LaRusso will take over at second base. In the eighth. One ball, one strike. The pitch on the way. Curve of beauty. Two strikes and a ball. Francona, left-handed hitter. Two strikes and a ball. The pitch swings and he fouls it back. Get that one right off his handle. That hurt his hand. Two strikes and a ball. Francona waiting at the plate. Veteran first baseman and outfielder. Two strikes and a ball. Now the pitch. Struck him out on a slow curve. Francona called out on strike. One, two, three, nothing across. At the end of seven, Detroit three, the A's two. And leading it off here will be Joe Necro, who's pitched an excellent ball game so far. He's allowed only three hits. The two runs that were scored were un unearned. Necro, pretty good hitter for a pitcher. Dobson's delivery. Strike a good fastball. One strike and no ball. Remember to stay with us for the post-game wrap-up. Which will feature an interview and all the other scores. Now the pitch to Negro. Strike two a fastball. Two strikes and nothing. Nobody on and nobody out. The A's welcome 150 fans from, the, from Sacramento. The Johnny McNamara A's Fan Club. Here's a curveball, swung on and missed. Necro goes down swinging. That's seven strikeouts for Dobson. One out here is Dick McCollum. So the Johnny McNamara A's Fan Club from Sacramento, some 150 strong, is here today. One out, nobody on, ball game in the eighth. Three to two, Detroit. The pitch to McCollum, a little wide. McCollum, nothing out of four last night, nothing out of three today. Chuck Dobson threw two home run balls, and that would hurt him. Here's a pitch swung, and he missed. That seventh strikeout gives him his highest strikeout total of the of the year for any single game. Listen in left field. There's the wind up the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. There's the base hit for McCollum. McCollum ripped the single up the middle. Dobson may have slowed that ball down with his bare hand. Here's Cesar Gutierrez, the shortstop. He's 0 for 3 so far today. Al Kaline would be next. Dobson getting ready. To have a chance to pull him out, you've got to hold him. The A's with probably a pinch hitter for Dobson starting the bottom of the eighth and then the top of the batting order. 
throw over to first to run her back. Gutierrez hitting 224. Right-handed hitter used to be with a giant. The stretch the pitch. Here it is. There goes the runner. Swung on line drive. Center field base hit. The runner will race to third. So the hit and run was put on and executed perfectly. Now here's K-Line up there. And it takes a great job of pitching now to get out of this jam. K-Line is one out of three. He struck out in the sixth. He hit into a double play to end the game last night. It would seem like too much to expect to have him do that again. Runners at first and third. Now the signal. The pitch on the way. And here it is. High pump foul back and out of play into the stand. One strike and no ball. Al K-line at the plate. Runners at first and third. One away. Detroit already leading three to two. The A's is a team that hit 62 homers this year. Now the stretch. The pitch. Curveball outside. And the pitching as a staff has given up 48 home runs. Willie McCovey's 18th home run of the year enabled the Giants to beat the Cubs before 34,000 in Chicago today. Here's the stretch, the pitch. K-line takes high. Two balls and a strike. Chuck Dobson. K-line seeing him for the fourth time today. Two balls and a strike. Diego Segui and Paul Lindblad are down on the bullpen. Two balls, one strike. Gutierrez, a lead at first base, the pitch. Outside, ball three. Be careful here. K-Line will not be taking anything. Three balls, one strike. Runners at first and third. The stretch, the hesitation. The 3-1 pitch, here it is. Ground ball to the left of Campanaris, up to Green for one, to LaRusso for one. First, throw him off the bag, and he saved the run score. Boy, give Gutierrez a little assist. He's hobbling as he limps off the field now. He went into LaRusso, he crowded him. Tony tried to throw around him, succeeded, but drew Mincher off the bag. There was a chance to get out of the inning with a double play, but we couldn't execute it. So K-Line drives in a big run. McAuliffe has scored. Campanaris played that ball nicely, moving far to his left near second base. Flipped it to LaRusso, who had his back turned to first, and with Gutierrez really crowding him, he had a tough pivot. Here's Cash, the stretch the pitch, high. One ball, no strikes. Four to two now in favor of the Tigers. Chuck Dobson getting set. The stretch. The delivery. High outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. K-Line credited with a run batted in. His 29th of the year. Two balls, no strikes. Now to stretch the pitch. Here it is, inside ball three. Willie Horton will be next. Dobson having a tough eighth inning. Three balls, no strikes. And Cash might be hitting away if the pitch is good. The three-nothing delivery now time is called. A hot dog wrapper is going onto the field. That disturbs Dobson, so he calls time to pick it up. 
Here's another one floating across. If he'd have left the other one alone, he would have blown off the field, too. Here's this one now. He calls time. Picks up another after. Three balls, no strike. Now a balloon starts to blow towards the field. There's a stretch. Three nothing pitch. Here it is. Boom! And he missed. With three and all, Cash was going for it, but he missed. And he's really angry at himself. That pitch was right down the middle. Cash is really angry at himself for missing it. Ray Ball's in the strike. Ready for the pitch. Here it is. Foul tip, he didn't mean to do it. He was taking ball four and it tipped his back. Now it's down to three and two. Fincher drops back off the bag. Four to two in favor of Detroit. The A's have been stopped cold by Joe Negro. Now to sign. Ready at the belt. The pitch three and two. There goes the runner. Here it is. Ball four. We'll pause for identification. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. And this is KNBR in San Francisco at 3.30. Harry Carey and Monty Moore from the ballpark with a run in. Runners on first and second. Two out. And Diego Segui is going to be brought in here. So Dobson will have pitched seven in two-thirds innings. There's no way that he could win this game, but he could be the loser. He struck out seven. He walked only one, and that was in this inning. Really should have been out of this inning if the double play had been executed. And now, Sagi. Comes in with runners at first and second and two away. In other baseball today, the Giants over the Cubs five to three. Everybody else in the National League will play night games. In the American League, the Yankees moved to within four and a half games of first place in that Eastern Division, knocking off the White Sox three to one before 22,000 plus. Milwaukee beat Baltimore six to four. The other teams will play tonight. Kansas City at Boston rained out. So Segui, who did a fine relief job last night and turned out to be the winning pitcher, comes in now. And if he can get out of this, a rally by the A's and the A's could still make him the winning pitcher again. game at his homestand. Now last year Detroit hit 13 home runs in six games played here. There were blanks in the home run department last night. Well they've hit two of them today. Cash hit one with one on to tie up the game at two and two. And then freehand homer in the fifth to give them the lead. They've picked up another run here to make it four to two. Willie Horton comes up with nothing out of three so far for the day. Dangerous hitter. He's walloped six homers. A big crowd on hand. The A's hopeful of rewarding this turnout with a victory. But so far, they've been baffled by Joe Necro. Stockily built. Right hand batter. The Segui's 21st appearance of the season. 
down the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swung and he missed. McGee is 1-2, lost three. Ernland Abbey's 3.16. line at second base, Cash at first base, now to side, out in left field, they continue to pound those bats, the staccato rhythm, now the stretch, the pitch, long and he fouls tip back, well Seguiz ahead of him here, Two strikes or nothing. Chuck Johnson, while he was in there, allowed four runs. Eight hits. Fan seven, walk one. In seven and two-thirds innings. The two home runs really hurt him. Two strikes or nothing. Willie Horton digging in. Two strikes, no ball. Diego Segui taking a lot of time. Now Horton steps out of the batter's box. Segui and Fernandez apparently not agreeing on what they want to throw. As Segui is shaking them off. Two strikes, no ball. Now he nods his head, he's ready. Here's the pitch. High. Two strikes, one ball. The Tigers have cashed in practically every opportunity they've had. Two strikes and a ball. Right hand hitter waiting. Now the stretch. Here's the pitch. High, and he's up to two and two. The second largest crowd in Oakland history, 48,758 paid here today. Two balls, two strikes. Signal given. Right hand hitter waiting. Two balls, two strikes. Runners at first and second. Segui's pitch. Here it is. Ball back. Into the upper deck. Getting some pretty good ripples up there. Two balls, two strikes. Segui kicks up the rubber. K line at second base. Cash at first base. Two balls, two strikes. Now he is set. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Here it is. Line drive in the center, a base hit. Another run will score. K-Line crosses the plate as Willie Horton lines a single to center. That makes it 5-2. to two. Here's Jim Northrup. McGee and Fernandez They just couldn't get together. And Segui acts a little upset. Now Johnny McNamara comes off, and Lindblad will be the new pitcher. That run is charged to Dobson. That's Horton's 40th run batted in. Jim Northrup was at two out of three. Now many of the spectators begin to leave. You can imagine. The 
traffic jam might be a little bit heavy. And some of the fans are maneuvering towards that end, getting out a little earlier. Lindblad will be facing Jim Norton. A run is in, two of them now in fact. And the A's have been stopped cold by Joe Necro. There'll be a pinch hitter to start the bottom of the eighth. Then Campanaris from Dunaloo, and if anybody gets on, Reggie Jackson. Mickey Stanley comes out as a pinch runner for Willie Horton, I believe. Yeah, that's what it is. Stanley's going to run for Horton. You're coming to the outfield as a defensive move anyhow. No, Horton's going to stay in. He's running for him. Cash. Norm Cash leaves the game. Mickey Stanley's going to run for him. And now Martin, who had left the diamond, going to the dugout, returns his position at first. Here's Jim Northrup. 5-2 to two Detroit. hold this lead, tomorrow's game will be the rubber game. On his home stand, now the stretch the pit. He swings at a curve and he misses. The A's lost two out of three to uh, Cleveland, then one two out of three from Baltimore, one last night. So they're four and three, here's the pitch outside. One ball and one strike. Men are out. Ball game in the eighth. Five to two, Detroit. This crowd hasn't had too much to cheer about. Both runs of the A scored were unearned. One ball, one strike, the pitch swung on. High fly ball, center field deep. Monday back, he's got room waiting for it. And he takes it. Got out Northrop, and that retires the side with two runs, three hits, no errors, two men left. We go to the bottom of the eighth, Detroit five, Oakland two. Well, Richfield's done it now. They've come up with something for the man who has everything. And what can that be? Well, think of something colorful and handsome, something pocket-sized and easy to handle. Then imagine that that something is honored at over 24,000 service stations from coast to coast. That it can bring you food and lodging at over 2,300 hotels and motels, or a car or a truck from any Hertz agency. And what do you come up with? Well, Richfield came up with the Arco credit card, the one that's all those things and more. You see, with all its many uses, an Arco card has still another built-in benefit. It's just bound to reduce the total number of credit cards any motorist needs to carry. That's good news for everybody, but especially for the man who has everything. It means he won't have to carry every card anymore. A few changes now for the Tigers. Al Kaline goes in to play first base. Mickey Stanley goes to center field. Jim Northrup moves over to right field. will be the pinch hitter. Body for Lindblad. Hardable has only batted 10 times. He's got three hits, three out of 10. Left-handed batter, he can really run. And the A's, who have been completely silent so far, are hopeful of making a little noise.
was the largest paid crowd in the history of Oakland baseball. They had 50,000 people here the first night they played a major league game, but only 47,000 were paid. So this is the biggest paid crowd in the history of Oakland. Here's Trotable, strike call. One strike to no ball. Joe Negro has been brilliant. Ball game in the bottom of the eighth. Time is running out. Now the delivery to the left-hand batter. There's a ground ball to the second baseman. He's got it, falls down, throws in time. Just can't do a thing with this fella. And here's Campanera. He's nothing out of three. We need some base runners to have a chance. One out, nobody on. Campanera is batting 229. The largest paid crowd in Oakland baseball history. Here today, here's the pitch. Strike call. One strike, no balls. Negro just keeps throwing that ball in there. Nobody does anything with him. Now the pitch. Into the dirt, that evens it up. He's been changing speed more than he used to do in the National League. <laughs> He's primarily a fastball, a slider, and at times a curveball pitcher. One ball, one strike. Now the pitch on the way, here it is. Ground ball foul. Two strikes and the ball. Bottom half of the eighth. Boy, this is the kind of day we hope the crowd would really inspire, inspire the eighth. And it may yes before it's over. Two strikes and the ball. The fifth. Here it is. High ball two. He has only walked one man. He has struck out four. He's allowed three hits. The A's have stranded only three men on base. They haven't had many chances. in the bullpen for Detroit. The leap by Lou would be next. Now the 2-2 two -two pitch. High ball two. He has only walked one man. He has struck out four. He's allowed three hits. Base. They haven't had many chances. Two balls, two strikes. Activity in the bullpen for Detroit. Philippe Ballou would be next. Now the 2-2 pitch. All three is high. Three balls, two strikes on Campaneras. Philippe Ballou Hitless in his last 11 times will be next. The 3 2 pitch. Ball four, he walked him. Here's Philippe Malou with Reggie Jackson next. Got a left hander getting ready out there. Jackson next, followed by Sal Bando. One out, one off. Joe Negro getting ready. Relief Ballou has been an easy out three times in a row. Now the stretch. And the throw to first, the runner back. 
Pinaris, who has stolen 11 bases. His team, though, is three runs behind. Now the stretch. The delivery. Might call the fastball. One strike, no more. Reggie Jackson will be next. Taking a lot of time. The bet. Low and outside. That evens it up. That was his off-speed curveball. One ball, one strike on Felipe Alou. He's had four homers. 27 runs out of it. Hitting 333. One ball, one strike. Now the pitch. Ball too low. There goes Campanaris with three hands. Kicks the ball. See what they're going to call it. A wild pitch, George. The Negro. Well, that takes away the double play possibility on a ground ball. Two balls and a strike. Negro takes a look around. Sunshine, beautiful day. Only 242 people left than 49,000 paid here. The pitch to Philippe. Here it is. There's a lot. Reggie bounced out, double and struck. 
count against Negro.
Rondo, the runner at first. The stretch. Here's the pitch. High, ball one. One ball, no strike. Frank Fernandez with the next. Bottom of the eighth inning. Venture's been known to hit them off left-handers. Miller's a hard thrower. One ball, no strike. The stretch. The pitch on the way. Here it is. base hit, he'd have a chance to score. Al Kaline holding him on at first base. One ball, one strike. Now the stretch, the hesitation. Here's the pitch. He didn't mean to swing a ground ball to the third base and smack the ball, can't make a play. He didn't mean to swing. The ball hit his ground and went down the third base line. Maddox got a run to his right. Knocked the ball down. Make a play, and here's Fernandez has ruled a base hit. Frank Fernandez will be the batter. The tying run is at second. The lead run is at first. Fernandez is nothing on a three for the day. He's been on a tear. John Hiller. Takes the squeeze of the rising back. against Fernandez. Two men are out, two men are on. The A's trail by a run. Now Hiller steps off the rubber. I don't know where all these little balloons are coming from, but they're all blowing on the field. Now the stretch. The pitch. Her ball strike hits the corner. One strike and no ball. Oh, for a 
bloopers someplace. Two out. Mason Jan. Hiller's pitch. Grounding ball, two shots. The throw to second for a post play to retire the shot. So, two runs out of all that. Boy, such sustained excitement. But only two runs, three hits, no errors, three left. And at the end of eight, Detroit five, Oakland four. Well, the A's with another one of their typical late-inning rallies. Reggie Jackson is Harry described just barely missed a home run. He really had a tremendous cut of the ball. This excitement will continue here again tomorrow. We'll face a left-hander named Mickey Lolich of the World Series hero two years ago. And pitching for the A's will be our winningest pitcher, Jim Catfish Hunter. Now that is to start at 1.30 here tomorrow afternoon, so you got plenty of time to get the family in church and Sunday school and still get out to the ball game. 1.30 start time here tomorrow afternoon. Now remember, two weeks from today, it's helmet day here at the Coliseum. The replicas of the A's batting helmets will be given away to any kids 14 and under who come. And as a result of what you can see here today, the largest paying crowd in the history of the Coliseum and what we had on cap day, we highly recommend that you get your tickets in advance before that two weeks from Saturday game at any United California Bank or Smith store or here at the Coliseum. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network. This is KNBR in San Francisco. Harry Carey and Monty Moore. As we go to the ninth, Marcel Latchman will be the pitcher. Here's a delivery to Bill to uh, Bill Freehand. Outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Elliot Maddox will be next. The pitch by Latchman. Inside ball two. Latchman pitched three full innings last night. Right back at him today. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch. There she goes, way back. It might be out of here. It could be. Last night. Allowed only 
one hit, no run. Sam three in his three innings. The pitch, strike two, curveball. Now the count, three and two. Dick McCullough will be next. Three balls, two strikes. The pitcher, John Hiller, waiting. The delivery. Digging in. We'll have La Russa leading off in the ninth. Got a pinch hitter for Latchman. The delivery. McCullough takes a strike over the outside corner of the knee. One strike, no balls. Two out, a run is in. On a home run blast off the bat of Bill Freehand. Now the pitch. There's a long drive. Center field back, back is Monday. Back, back. Near the track. And he makes the catch. It's on the north slope of Alaska, 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Finding oil there is hard. Getting it out of the ground is almost impossible. The men of Atlantic Richfield do the impossible. They work 12 hours a day in 45 degree below zero temperature. They go through $10 worth of gloves a week and a $30 pair of boots a month. They work in the dark most of the year. And they work hard. Why do they come here to drill for oil? Well, the pay's good, the food's good, and besides, nobody ever did it before. Atlantic Richfield went all the way to Alaska to provide your local Richfield dealer with the finest Arco Petroleum products for your car. Well, it's been a tough battle, Ma. Tony La Russa will lead it off. Bob Johnson is going to be the pinch hitter for Latchman. John Hiller. Who had a few thrills and heart palpitations himself in the bottom of the eighth before he finally got the last out. Six to four, Detroit. Boy, this turned out to be quite a thrilling ball game. The pH de resistance would be a three-run rally in the bottom of the ninth. The pitch to La Russa. Way outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes, nobody on, nobody out. La Russa hitting 205. Tall, slim, right-handed batter. Now the pitch by Hiller. Right down the middle. A fastball strike curl. The count evens at a ball and a strike. Here's Hiller getting ready. The pitch on the way. Curve low and outside ball two. A base runner would bring up the tying run. and a strike. Time is called. La Russa steps out of the batter's box. Three helmets will be given away to everybody 14 and under on Saturday, June the 20th, two weeks from today. Here's the pitch. Strike two call. And now La Russa's carried the count down to two balls, two strikes, nobody on, nobody out, bottom of the ninth. The Tigers leading six to four. John Hiller gets ready. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Fly ball, easy out. Mitchy Stanley waiting. One gun. Bobby Johnson coming out. Hitting 175. He's had one homer.
That three hand is keeps on his pitchers pretty good. He's constantly going on, reminding him of something or other. Seems to work with his pitchers very well. One out. I don't know how well he's going to work with Denny McLean if Denny's read those excerpts from his new book. Here's the pitch. Curveball in there. Johnson takes a strike. One strike, no ball. Killer. And a fine job of relief. One man away, nobody. Here's a pitch. Way outside. Miller isn't very impressive, but he's getting him out. One ball, one strike. The delivery. Long and he fouled it back. He's going to hold two strikes and a ball. Campy Campaneras will be up there next. Somebody's got to get on to give Alou another chance. Two strikes on the ball on Bobby Johnson. The pitch to the right-hand hitter. High. That evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. To give you an idea, the Tigers have had ten hits today and have stranded only four men. Left only four on base. Now the pitch. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Bobby Johnson. Trying to get on base to bring up the tying run. Campanaris will be up there next. Three balls, two strikes. Now the delivery. Here it is. Popped up. Forget about it. On the infield. Get Paris there. Campaner. He's got to get on there if we're to have a chance. It's six to four in favor of the Tigers. Bobby Johnson, who had a great season as a pinch hitter last year, is finding out that that is the one thing toughest to do, to be consistently good coming cold off the bench. Nothing out of three. The delivery by Hiller. Yeah, a little bit low. Many of the fans heading to the exits now. One ball, no strike. Philippe Alou next. Here's the fifth. Ball, two balls. Alou hit a homer with a man on in the eighth to pull the A's to within one. Then Freehan hit one in the top of the ninth to make the margin two. Now to wind up the two-nothing pitch. Ball three. Philippe would be coming up next, and then Reggie Jackson. All is not yet over. But there are two out. Three balls, no strikes on Campy Campanera. Here's a pitch. Strike call. Three balls and a strike. takes a look down the third base line. Three balls, one strike. They move the third baseman back, huh? John Hiller gets ready. The 3-1 pitch. Here it is. Strike two. Campaneras really screams about that one. Them up here, of course, but Freehan caught the ball. Freehan caught the ball very low. Three balls, two strikes. Now Hiller gets ready. The 3 2 pitch. Ball, he walked him. And here's Philippe Balou. Can he do it again? And Reggie Jackson will be coming up should Philippe get on. Corner. The Hiller's been getting that first strike to most of the hitters. 
foul ball. He's got a good fast ball on a slider. Relief weight. The stretch. The pitch. Way high and outside, and that evens it up. A bomb on a strike. Representing the winning run would be at the plate. What a dramatic situation that would be. Two balls, one strike. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Six to four in favor of the Tigers. John Hiller gets ready. The pitch to Philippe. Popped up in short center. That should be the ball game. Ricky Stanley is there, and the Tigers win. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. We'll be back with the... Oh, we keep it here, don't we? That's right. A tough ball game, a hard fight, oh, but we lost. Two minutes and 40, two hours and 47 minutes for your game time. And here are the two. Six runs, ten hits, two for Detroit. Bill Freehand hit two homers. Norm Cash hit another homer with a man on. So there is four of the runs on those home run blast. They really played long ball here today. Six runs, ten hits, two errors for Detroit. They stranded only four. Joe Negro is the winner. He now has won five and lost five. And for John Hiller, it was his second save of the year. And for the A's, it was four runs, six hits, no errors. They stranded seven. Their losing pitcher was Chuck Dobson. He now has won five and lost six. Time of the ball game, two hours and 47 minutes. We'll be coming back to the post-game wrap-up, which will feature not only the full rundown on baseball, but also interview with one of the main participants of this ball game, Joe Necro, the winning pitcher. Final score again, Detroit even the series, beating the A's 6-4. to four. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. It was an exciting scene here today with the biggest paid crowd in the history of Oakland baseball, 48,758 putting it on the line to see a thrilling ball game, but unfortunately, the home team did not win. As the contest went to the Tigers, 6-4. to four. Rubber game of the series tomorrow afternoon. The game starts at 1.30. We'll be on the air with a pregame show at 1.10. Now speaking for our executive producer, Hal Ashby, our engineer, John Cameron, Paul Monty Moore, this is Harry Carey, wishing you all a very pleasant good afternoon from the Coliseum in Oakland. Where before 48,758, the Detroit Tigers using the long ball down the Oakland A's six to four. See you in a few minutes with the wrap-up. So long, everybody. This is the Oakland A's Baseball Network.